Today we are going to be talking about why we left Gambia and the things we like about Gambia. Hello and welcome to today's show. Uh, yeah, um, Gambia was a beautiful place as you all know, uh, what we said before, but for me, I think, hands down, actually, it's not even enough to be thinking about it. The beaches were the best thing for me. Um, anybody who knows me knows me as an outdoorsy kind of person. So um, going to the beach was a regular thing. It was part of my routine, actually, and I uh, probably felt really bad if I didn't get to go. The serenity of the water, the sand, the whole grounding and earthing yourself. It just felt really good. And uh, better still, when we had company mm. besides us, you know. Um, but yeah, we actually got a few people together on a regular occasion. So it became a very, very much integral part of our lives. And um, now we're here. I'm keeping it up too. <laughs> well, I think um, for me, it was a fact that we're able to get closer to nature. Um, in the UK, uh, we bought a lot of organic stuff, which cost us a lot of money. And we were fortunate that uh, it didn't cost that much money in Gambia and it was readily available. You got fruits in season, you know, not like the imported ones you had to get, and the imported ones you had to get uh, out there. Um, so it was very good that we could, we had uh, uh, access to less processed meals and we had to eat more naturally. That was utterly fantastic. Um, I love the fresh fruits. I love uh, mixing, juicing. Um, I also uh, really enjoyed uh, being able to go out there um, to pick my leaves and to make my own tea. Definitely. Um, I bought so much organic teas in the UK and um, just to know they're right out in the garden was uh, very good. I'm and coming away from the UK now, coming to Africa, particularly going to Gambia, because Gambia being as small as it is, uh, and, you know, with the pace of life there, it was more of a natural kind of place, less built up and, you know, and infrastructure. Yeah. Exactly. Less developed in, uh, to some places that we've been to in terms of this infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, depends on how you look at development, obviously. Yes, yes I was just going to say that development is a very, you know, it depends on whose perspective uh, you're, you're taking it from. It was a natural environment we found ourselves amongst the animals, even. I mean, oh, we were walking yes, amongst yes, cows yes, and sheep yes, and yes, yes. goats and things. Yes. That was amazing, actually. That was quite. When we first got there, how did you kind of react to that? Like, the goats were like, they're so cute, like, especially the little ones and the chickens and everything. Like, I was really excited. But then I started to get used to it. Yes, yes. We had the monkeys coming to our garden. Um, we had birds literally knocking on the windows. Yes. Uh, so yeah. that was all good. Yeah. Gambia is known for its bird watching and it has got many, many beautiful species of birds. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But I also wanted to mention that, you know, um, having natural things around you and not just being aware, um, um, even when we paid uh, an arm and a leg to buy organic food in the UK, um, I don't think they are always really organic. So I remember buying uh, yeah. seedless grapes. organic grapes. Yeah. I'm not sure how uh, a natural fruit would not have seeds. That's true. Um, that's true. So uh, that's an aspect of do you really know what you're eating, or is it just marketing? Mm. To, to, you know. Mm. So yeah, Gambia was lovely in many ways. It's a very natural space, and yeah, the pace was pretty. <laughs> You know, depending on what you're looking for. We're used to in the yes. UK. Obviously, there's a big difference, actually. Um, yeah. But I also liked, I have to say, going out there, because we do try and immerse ourselves into any culture we find. If we go somewhere, we, we kind of do as they do there. And that's, that was the point of going to Gambia, to live with the locals and, you know, 
learn from the locals and, and just be part of that precise society. Yeah. Um, so we like going and doing things that the locals do, just just things like going to the market, that was me, yes, and yes, yes, yes. bargaining with everybody, because mm-hmm. you do have to bargain in Africa. <laughs> the price you see is certainly not, you don't see the price actually, there's no price written there, so it's about them telling you what the price is, and um, they assess you based on your look and yes. your bargaining. Yes, I also feel that anything is worth what you believe it's worth. I think the idea of people telling you what it's worth, I don't know, because something might be worth much more to me than it is to you. Yes. So why do I, why should I pay the same price when it's on that? You know, there are things we need, but the value differs. So you should be able to negotiate to a reasonable state. And if you feel it, if it works for you, it does. if it doesn't, then... I think I'm getting good. I think I'm getting good at it now. <laughs> What else did you like? What did you like about Gambia? The things I enjoyed about Gambia were um, I went to the centre every week and um, I learned about um, African history, I did agriculture, business studies and I met different people from like all around the world and I made a lot of friends there. Okay, we also had a lot of you, you went to various places, events, activities, and things like that. Did you yeah. really enjoy that as well? Yes, I did. So there was one of them where um, I made my own um, skincare products, like creams and um, different things. There was other teams as well that did perfumes and other cosmetics, and um, it really helped to understand more about business. Finance. The products were so good actually, by the time we came back for you they'd been sold out, so it was a really, really great event and a real success. Yes, 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 I think it's a really nice centre for children um, and I think uh, the best should be pulled out of them mm-hmm. as early as possible. Definitely. Um, I think sometimes uh, people are slowed down by following processes set by other people. So I really do commend uh, uh, Grace. Grace for putting that together and, um, you know, helping the children to find themselves, to lean to what they naturally want, yeah. you know, created to do. You guys also did Gambia Got Talent. Oh, yes. Tell me about how, okay. what did you do for that? So um, with that, what we did was, there was different teams um, just like the other one so we had um, people that went PA the finance team uh, people that was designing the logos and the flyers which is what I did mm. and um, it was really nice because again like we got to learn about business and um, there was lots of people there and um, there was stands and there was a lemonade stand we mm. stood there some people were like selling the tickets for people to get in and it was wow. Awesome. So it was everything, and you did you learn all the different bits of the business. So, yeah. Yes, um, it was a successful event. It was a successful event. And a successful performance by the youngsters as well, even when they were singing their song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so I guess that's um, Gambia in a nutshell for us. Um, you know. It's not a bad place to be, but in life, it's very dependent on where you are and what your outlook is. Yeah, where, where, where you want to be, where you want to find yourself and, and you know, I think because we have travelled quite a bit and we've been in the UK and we've seen different things and had different experiences, um, we were able to assess very quickly, quite quickly into our stay in Gambia. Yeah. That perhaps we needed a bit more. And it's kind of funny because it's the same thing that kind of brought us there the slowness, the relaxedness, the slower pace of life. Um, but that ended up being the same thing that made us yeah. decide to actually move and move yes. on yes. Uh, more quickly to, to Nigeria because we, we did plan to go to Nigeria yes. at some point. It was always um, the plan to come to Nigeria, to end up in Nigeria. Um, I think what also attracted us to Gambia was during lockdown, we were watching a lot of TV and we realized a lot of diasporans are going there. You know, for me, I felt that was going to be like a really nice synergy, uh, the coming together of the Africans in Africa and the Africans in Africa who are choosing to come back home. So I just thought this is a good, you know, good kind of mini revolution here and uh, meeting of minds and what's going to happen from here. You know, um, but it wasn't as 
I, as we anticipated, when we were on ground. Mm -hmm. And um, but very luckily for us, there, there was a plan. Because mm -hmm. we actually literally gave ourselves five years was a maximum that we thought we were going to be in Gambia. Yeah, yeah. Before, yeah, coming, before, yeah. before, before coming to Nigeria. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it ended up only being like one year. Yeah, he ended up, he ended up, he ended up. But I think in life, this is what happens. You gotta keep moving yeah, till you absolutely. find your, your, your balance, you know? If you get stuck, it's all over. And um, yeah. knowing that you're not happy in an environment and you want to do more, you want to flourish. I mean, Abisola being as young as she is, she's got everything ahead of her. And we didn't want to limit that. Yes. We didn't feel that Gambia was going to allow her to be herself and express and reach those potentials that I know that she's destined for. So. Nigeria just had to come a bit quicker, but that's, that's what it is. <laughs> but now you're here, babe. What do you think? And do you feel any different? Um, I definitely like the like faster pace of it, and I've got like more family here, and I just feel like I can do like much more here, and there's more opportunities. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, she sounds like a real businessman already. <laughs> 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 Yes, but um, not to take anything away from Gambia, yeah. we had a wonderful time. We did. Um, you as know, we, we said did. through and through as well, we've met really, really great people. Yes. We've got very good friends and people we consider family there. So yes. it was definitely not a waste. Yes. It's just that we knew we wanted to do yes. more and yes. be more, basically. So yeah. in terms of investment, we didn't lose out. Um, we were able to secure um, some land, especially. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some for sale, actually, uh, if you're interested in, in, in you know, um, having a piece of land in Gambia, especially the Sanyang area, um, you know. So anyone who knows about Gambia, Gambia um, there's an area called Sanyang, which the seaports have come to, or are coming to, I should say. And so prices are, are moving fast and the area is very, very popular with the diaspora community. Um, so yeah, we've got beachside and non-beachside in that area. So um, we've got good pieces of land. If you're interested, email us and then we'll take it from there. Um, and I can't, can't leave this one out. This is one of the other things I did like when I was there. Um, <laughs> I have to say there's a place I used to go to so often to buy meat pies. <laughs> you remember my meat pie man? <laughs> So these meat pies, they're a bit like a patty, a Jamaican patty, or even a, a meat pie. Actually, you know, we do meat pies here too in Nigeria, but they're different pastries. Mm -hmm. This meat pie was uh, very nice. So I had to say hi <laughs> to the man down there. And um, thank you for supplying us with the meat pies. <laughs> yeah, she used to buy so much, I would freeze them. And before it finishes, she wants to go back. You remember those times, Abizela? Hmm? Always I've been looking for meat pie. And they did the fish ones as well. Yeah, yes. the fish ones as well. Yes. And there's always an opportunity for you to want to go to Iceland for ice cream. There we go. Yeah, yeah that area. That was the yeah. traffic lights yeah. area. So, yeah. Traffic lights. And Kariba Avenue. Meet Pine Mamas on Kariba Avenue. Kariba yeah. Avenue. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, yes. I remember the names. I did. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, just want to say that um, we had a good time in Gambia. We've talked about some of the things we like. We can possibly touch on all of it. Um, and we've also talked about part of the reasons why we left Gambia. On that note, let's ask you to subscribe first, actually. Maybe so now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the post notification button. We'll see you next time. Oh, no. Part of the reason we made this video is to share some of our experiences in the Gambia with our esteemed viewers. We believe that our experiences in life play a significant part in determining our reality. We are aware that our experiences are personal to us and may not be applicable to everyone. For those who can relate, great. For those who cannot relate, that is also great. We all have our path to follow. Although we chose to leave the Gambia, we have wonderful friends who have stayed and set up successful businesses and have a very happy lives. The Gambia will always be a part of us and we intend to visit often. Sincerely, Ebi Adele Abodadele.